everyone. Welcome to Best Kept Secrets. I'm your host, Lele Pons. There's no denying that 2020 as a whole sucked, but you know, don't get me wrong. I definitely had a lot of good things happen last year and I'm super grateful, but in general, life just felt like, you know, it had a little bit of great filter over it. But you know what? The good thing is that we can now say bye forever to a bad year. And I know we're all ready to kick ass in 2021. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. I've never really sat down and set myself New Year's resolutions, but this year, I think I'm going to do it. I started working out last year and that was one of my New Year resolutions from last year. But I think I'm going to continue obviously working out. I'm going to eat healthier because I really don't eat healthy. And I'm going to spend more time with my family, something I didn't do. I'm going to work on myself in different ways. I want to learn a new language. I think I want to travel to places I've never traveled before when we can. You know, since since we couldn't this year, I did some research of places like Iceland that I wanted to go to. And lastly, I think I'm just going to try things I never tried before. However, one of the things I loved about 2020 was that I started this podcast. And what I love most about the show is that I think it helps our callers and hopefully helps all of our listeners to realize that you are not alone. There are so many people out there, you know, in the world who are going through the same thing or at least something similar and can relate to you. Also, just wanted you guys to know that it's important to reach out for help when you need it. And it's also important for you to offer out your support when others need it. Meeting with and talking to people like me in therapy groups at the ranch, like I think it gave me the, that extra boost of confidence and power that I really needed to get through some of my toughest days. Therefore, both our callers today have a secret that stem from the fact that they feel alone. One of our callers today, Veronica's secret, is pretty heavy, so I think I'm going to start out today's show with Denzian, who's been keeping his favorite musician a secret because he's so embarrassed to love her and thinks that nobody will understand. And you'll see why. Let's give him a call. Denzian, how are you doing today? I'm well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I'm dying to know, what is your best kept secret? I thought I was going to change my voice so that nobody could hear this, but what the hell? I'm just going to say it. I really, really love teeny bopper music. Like like, like the stuff that little 13-year-old girls will go crazy to listen to. I mean, that really is my thing. I've seen Taylor Swift over 20 times in concert. Well, I love that. I love that. Why is that bad? I don't... You know what you should do? I think you should have a child. I think you should have a girl, a little girl, so you can go to concerts and be like, oh, it's because I'm with my, my child. Well, see, I don't have a little girl <laughs> to go to concerts with, so I go alone. But I pretend I'm with somebody if somebody asks me a question. Because sometimes there are other parent therapists, and they'll ask me, um, oh, so your daughter dragged you here too. And I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 she sure did. But I'm giving her space. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That's amazing. What's your favorite Taylor Swift song? I Did Something Bad is my all-time favorite. Um, oh. I, look, I like Look What You Made Me Do. Um, of course. Of course, it's great, but I Did Something Bad. That that really is my favorite. Do you know her old albums? Like, Did you just start listening to her, or do you know her from a long time ago? Because I think the her first albums were amazing as well. Well, you know, when she was doing the country stuff, um, or at least when they were saying she was country, I didn't really pay that much attention. The 1989 tour is when it really, really start kicking in. Yes. Because the, the songs were great. so catchy to me. But, you know, she's not the only one. I mean, she's my favorite. But, hell, Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA. <laughs> party in the USA. Forget about wow. that. Wow. I still listen to that damn song every other day. I love it. I love it. Miley, I don't care what else she does. I love that song. Oh, my God. So did you see her in the VMAs when she hosted? I most certainly did. And listen, now, this isn't Teeny Bopper, but when she redid uh, Jolene by uh, Dolly Parton, of course, I love that, too, because I love Dolly Parton. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jolene, Jolene, don't take my man Aww. because you can. Oh, I love it. Did you ever see Hannah Montana? You know what? I, I did see some of that. Um because that was when we first, at least that's when I first heard of her. I'd hear it on the radio or whatever. I'd be like, wait a minute. This girl's good. 
Like, people can make fun of Taylor all they want, but she writes that stuff, and she's good. Taylor's just good. Taylor's amazing. Taylor's my favorite. My favorite, too, but hands down. And listen, I will not listen to Kanye West ever again after he pulled that stunt on her. Oh yeah, no. The thing I don't I don't listen to Kanye West. I mean, I, I give him respect. He's very talented, but my type of songs are like Taylor Swift, Latin songs. But definitely, I've I've been to three of her concerts. I went to the Red concert for Taylor Swift. I've been at, like I just I'm in love with her. Like she's amazing. Um, Miley Cyrus is great. Shawn Mendes, Camila Cabello. I feel like they're all a group. There's it's Selena Gomez. I'm a well, big fan know, of them. Do you know who Julia Michaels is? Yes, of course you wrote. Here's my Julia Michaels story. I'm at, a, I'm at a restaurant. I see Julia across, and she's with all these young people, of course. I walk right over there to her. Right, I mean, there's a, 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 an entourage. I walk right over to her. I introduce myself. I said, I don't know if any of the 45, 50-year-old person is coming over to tell you how much they love your, your music and what you've written and what you perform, but I want to tell you, I really enjoy you. And then she goes, oh, do you have a daughter or something? And I go, uh, yes. And her name's Sharon. <laughs> I made it up right on the wow. spot. Wow. Oh. I don't know why nobody wants you to, like, why do people assume that you have to have a daughter? They don't expect a young boy to be crazy over that kind of music. And they really don't expect an old boy. Have you ever run into someone at a concert that you knew? Never, never. But if I did, good. I would come up with something. I'd come up with some kind of story. I, I, I'm still not comfortable enough where I would tell them that I was there by myself. You haven't told anybody this? Never. You're, you, I'm telling you, you're the very... <laughs> yeah, of course. No, and I'm all for it. I'm all for it because my dad's the same. My dad loves Taylor Swift. He And he like loves her in like a very like... Oh, she's such a role model kind of thing. She, he wants me to be like her. Like he like loves her. He loves Miley Cyrus. He loves all of them. He used to watch it well all with me, you know. Um, and I wonder, are you annoyed that you can't post anything on social media about it? Uh, well, I'm not annoyed, but you know, the people's perception of the truth is their truth, and I know that if I post pictures of me in, at concert with Taylor Swift or whatever people are going to think of me in a way that I don't want them to. I mean, because they're going to judge you. Right. And so, so I, I don't want to deal with that. Uh, so I know nobody knows. You're, I'm telling you, you know, and I want to know just so I can have a picture of you. Are you like a buff guy? I am six feet, two inches tall. I'm a hundred. Oh my miles. God. And I'm a black man. So people would really be shocked. Wow. I love it. I love it. What what the fuck? Like, this is the type of shit that we need in this podcast. Like, probably someone that's listening to this podcast right now knows maybe someone that's like you. And actually, you know, it's a guilty pleasure. And that's it. You can't help it. Like, if you like it, you like it. Hey, listen. In the immortal words of Selena Gomez, the heart wants what it wants. <laughs> and you know what? It's okay because I have met a lot of, like, people, like like, not parents, but, like, just, like, People like you, just like an adult that comes up to me and is like, I love your stuff. And I'm just like, and I look around and they don't have a child next to them, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So you never, and you never know if they, if they, they've lied. They've, they've been like, Hey, this is for my daughter. Can you do a vi- Can you do a picture with me? And I was like, Oh, with you. Okay, cool. Like I'll do it. I wonder if they have a daughter. They may not because Julia Michaels literally did or just shot a video with my phone. She said, let me say hello to your daughter. So here I've got this video and there's no daughter to show it to. And I just didn't have the heart to tell her, oh, uh, you know, I really don't have a daughter, but OK. So now I've got this video and it's great. It's great. I love that. And then you're always going to have that. Did you show it to anybody? Uh, no. <laughs> uh. After today, after talking to you right now, really, I feel so energized. I'm going to come out of the closet. You're going to come out of the closet? I'm going to come out of the yeah, closet. Do it. Why not? And I want to let people know Taylor Swift is my girl. And who cares? Because you know what? She, you can be like, hey, listen, if you have a problem with Taylor Swift, just look at her record. She has so many Grammys. She's won a lot of stuff. You know, it's it's, it's the truth. Like, she actually is someone that, like, with facts, she's one of the best. With facts. And she is. And listen, I, I, I'm really going to do this. I'm really going to do it. After this, I'm really going to do it. And anybody who says anything to me 
I'm just going to look at them and I'm going to sing Taylor Swift and tell them you need to calm down. I'm glad I met someone that, you know, that that likes Taylor Swift a lot like me because I don't you know what? I don't I did. I haven't found so many that are obsessed with her like like I am. Well, you hey, listen, Lily, you got one right here. Danzy and Danzy and Danzy and loves her. I think she's extremely talented. I love her. I want to know how how's it been? I mean, I, I've been really sad, but how's it been since we can't go to concerts? Well, since we can't go to concerts, you know, every now and then there some little teeny boppers may have a little concert thing, virtual thing, and a part of me wants to do that, but I said to hell with that. So what I do is I go to YouTube. And I just punch in the songs that I like, and I just go live performances. So it turns out that Taylor has my favorite song, I Did Something Bad, right there on YouTube in her live performance during the Reputation Tour. I probably have seen that a hundred times over this quarantine. I just want to say, literally, thank you so much for sharing this secret with us, because maybe a lot of people are going through the same thing. They love Taylor Swift. They don't want to say it. But if you do, if you love Taylor Swift, go out and say it and scream it out because she is amazing and she's going to continue being amazing. There's more to come from Taylor Swift. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. And thank you, too. I wish you the very best. Have a great day. You, too. Continue. Don't be ashamed. All right. Bye bye. All right. Seriously, as a Taylor Swift fan, I am so happy that there is someone that, you know, is a, an adult like that, that loves Taylor Swift as much as I do, because honestly, she does deserve it. And, you know, it's it, it, it maybe it takes some guts for him to actually admit it because you can tell, like, you know, like it's not so common and, and he probably gets, you know, like embarrassed. So I'm happy that he he talked to us because there's there's no reason to be embarrassed about loving Taylor Swift. We all do secretly. I told this to my managers. I told this to a couple of my friends. If you don't like Taylor Swift, I promise you at least know three songs from her, like from beginning to end. You at least know word by word three Taylor Swift songs. And in my case, you know, I don't make music just for young kids. I also make it for everybody. The elderly, the adults, dads, mom, teachers, anybody can listen to my music when I do it. So it, there's no age range in music. I have to admit, I love him. I really do love him, and I love that call. But right now, we're going to shift a little bit the mood with Veronica. But don't go anywhere, because the next call is really good. All right, guys, we're back. Now, are you ready? Because we're going to give Veronica a call. Let's do it. Hi, Veronica. Hi. Oh, my God. We are dying to know... What is your best kept secret? Uh, all right. You ready for it? Yeah, it's let it go, boo. So quarantine is a little hard. So yeah. I started ordering lots of packages. And yeah, of course. the same delivery guy kept bringing my packages. And he was very attractive. And I just started talking to him one day. It's like the pool boy. Always attractive. Yeah. And, um, well, one thing led to another and I, you know, offered him some coffee and he came in and then that just, we hooked up and then I kept ordering more packages. <laughs> Are you married? I am. Oh, so this is an affair. You know what? The thing is like, I've been there, but I'm not married. So keep on going. So yeah, I've been, I've been married for eight years oh, and, wow. um, I mean, my husband works really long hours. I mean, we just we just haven't really connected in a long time. And I mean, this beautiful UPS man came and I just, um, I keep calling him that because obviously I don't want to like give his identity. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie The Affair? No, I haven't. You should no. see it. It's the same thing. It's like, you know, there, sometimes you have trouble in your marriage. And to save it, you kind of need that other side that you can't get. I think that's yeah. it, you know? Were you having yeah. trouble in your marriage before you started having an affair or did this happen out of the blue? Um, I mean, things were a little rocky, certainly. I mean, like, he's, you know, works long hours. I never saw him. So I was just, it was more than I was just lonely, honestly. Um, and and now I just, like, don't have the heart to tell him. And I also keep enjoying having the, like, the affair. Just... How did you go from just thinking he was hot to actually hooking up? Well, like he came in for the coffee and um, 
I kind of like, you know, hand him the cup. It's like that movie moment where you like did the, your hands touch and then you just like fill up electricity and we just kind oh, of eyes locked and, and they just kind of one thing led to another and then it was super erotic and steamy and I mean who, who doesn't fantasize about you know doing Ooh, the delivery I, I, know, like, and how, how, I want to know how's the sex oh oh my god it's incredible ah! I mean uh, that's why I keep ordering <laughs> do you feel guilty about it oh Absolutely. I mean, it's, oh, that's why I mean, that's why I need to tell them. That's why I'm telling you. I like haven't been able to tell anybody. So you haven't told anybody. You are the first person. Oh, besides, thank you. you know, the UPS guy. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I hope you don't get caught. I, I hope that you're the one that tells it instead of you getting caught. Have you almost though had got caught? Uh, no, no. Luckily, I mean, I know his his schedule is pretty tight. So, yeah. um, like you said, he's like never home. So this really, as far as I know, I've never been close to caught or. You, you know, you don't consider divorcing this guy. No offense. Yeah, but it seems like he doesn't give you anything in life. Yeah, it's just we've been together for eight years. Like, how how do you just end that? Well, what, let's talk about the guy more. Like, do you only see him when he delivers stuff, or have you met him outside of his working hours? No, I, I've strictly kept it for when I order a package. Oh shit! So you so you order a lot? I do. I order. <laughs> I order way too much stuff. I feel like they they definitely are like this girl has a problem. She orders so many packages, but even things that you don't even need, you just order it just to see him. Oh yeah, I mean like toothpaste. What it, it, in mundane things I could easily get at the store, but like it's just an excuse to order something that I know he's he could probably bring me, and like that adds to the thrill. Like I think if I actively saw him outside of this, like special thing we had going. I don't know. I just don't think that that thrill would be there or maybe it would ruin this beautiful fantasy yeah. that we created. Do you guys text? No. Uh-uh. I, like, I, I strictly like that it's just this in-person interaction because I can feel somebody and talk to somebody. So I, I want to keep it that way. Yeah. Okay. And how, how does he feel about you being married? Does he care? I think, you know, obviously when we hooked up, it sort of just kind of happened and didn't really kind of talk about that and then afterwards i mentioned it and a little taken back by it but i mean he keeps coming back so you have no plans on breaking it with him do you maybe i uh i just didn't think quarantine would last so long i don't i don't know what do you think after quarantine things might change i mean it mainly sprung from me being so like lonely and not being able to see people you know and i like working from home and not be able to like see coworkers, and so it's just like that intense loneliness has been just nice Aww. to have somebody physically there yeah. with you. And have you told your husband that you are feeling really lonely? Yeah, I've I've mentioned it. What um, did he say? Uh, he's like, well, you can get a dog, but it's not really the same thing. Oh man, <laughs> you know? I, I don't know if I like your husband that much. <laughs> I can see, I can see that from like me explaining him, but I mean, it's the same time. as like you know, I, he's still my best friend in a way. It's just the best friend that you just don't talk to anymore. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, I'm so sorry. But now you don't feel lonely anymore. Yeah. Right. Oh well. My last question to you is: What do you think your husband, with everything you're telling me, I don't even think he cares, would say if you told him? What if he found out? I honestly think he'd be pretty devastated. And Really? You don't think he sees it coming? I don't think he does. I think he's too focused on his work to realize oh, wow. what's going outside of that. Yeah, it, I think it would blindside him. Well, I hope he never finds out. I hope, uh, I hope, I don't know. I hope Maybe he's the one that eventually is going to be like, I think you deserve better. If he really loves you, yeah. he knows that you're lonely, he should say that eventually. Because... It's going to make you feel hurt, the loneliness, eventually. And listen, you have all the right, like, if you ever, like, break up with him or divorce him, not for lack of love, but for, for what's going on, he, he should understand. This is, it's not that you guys are having sex and you have, do you have kids? No, no kids. And no Thank kids God. there. <laughs> and you tried to talk to him about it, so I don't know. I don't know. I... I Let's see what happens. I wish you the best of luck, and I want to say thank you so much Aww. for coming and talking to us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.
This is a really tough one because, you know, the fact that she said that she's lonely. Man, if you if your husband loves you, he's going to try to make it work. Why do people cheat? Loneliness, lack of sex, lack of the other person caring. Like, this is the type of things that happen. Yes, cheating is bad. So I would recommend her to divorce this guy because, you know, and like do something else. She, You can tell that she's bored. She's so unhappy, you know? And she's latching onto other things to make her like her day go faster and like not to feel lonely. So honestly, it's a tough one. I don't want to get involved in this one. But if it was me being her, I would say something. I would be like, you know what? If you're not going to change, I'm going to take a break. That's one. And if I was the husband, I would be like, I mean, yeah, maybe he'll be devastated because his ego might be hurt. But I would understand 100 percent. He can't be like, what? What went wrong? No, she told you you ignored her. So shame on him. I think an affair is like a band-aid to like a, a long-term problem that has been happening. And she's going through that right now. And I don't know how she's going to get out of it. I wonder if the husband actually did give her attention and everything. Would she continue cheating? Maybe she wouldn't. I don't know. I wish her luck. And I hope the husband wakes up. Okay, that was a lot. Thank you guys so much for listening. On the surface, this week's two calls seem to be about completely different things. But when I put them both together, you know, Denzian and Veronica have been dealing with two different types of loneliness this year. And that's something that I can definitely relate to. And I know that some of you can too. I started a long distance relationship last year and it is pretty hard, you know, because sometimes you feel lonely. Sometimes you're like, I can't do this. Sometimes you even are next to people that are together, like couples, and you're like, I can't stand this. Like, I feel the loneliest I've ever felt before. So I understand. And this was during, you know, lockdown. And that was last year. Now, hopefully this year with, you know, with COVID and everything, I hope hope it leaves. You know, it's going to be better for me and my and my partner. But, you know, some things that I do when I feel lonely, I just actually surround myself with people that are going through the same thing I'm going through. Like my single friends, you know, I, I spend time with them. I watch a lot of movies, you know, of long distance of like what's happening to me to make me feel better. And also working out does a great difference. Now, Denzian has been experiencing a different type of loneliness. His secret love of teeny bopper music, as he called it, has made him feel a little bit awkward about how much he loves listening to Taylor Swift and Selena Gomez, but mostly obviously Taylor Swift. He's so embarrassed by this that he even made up like a fake daughter because, you know, Julia Michaels recorded a video message for the girl because she probably didn't believe it. You know, some people, it's hard to believe, but like you like the music that you like. It doesn't music does not have an age. And, you know, as he said, he felt really, really lonely because he thought that nobody was going to understand him. So I was really proud of him by the end of the call when he said that, you know, from now on, he's going to be loud and proud about the music and that he's going to open up and tell everybody. And that's what I like to hear. Now, Veronica is experiencing something a little bit of a different, you know, type of loneliness, which is a lot sadder because for her, it's her husband who is not really there for her, you know. And the fact that, you know, husband and wife should be there. And she's stuck now. And as a result of that, that loneliness has led her into this hot, steamy affair with the UPS guy delivery guy. It's like a fantasy situation that has become a reality for her. But I think she knows it's not like a long term solution and she's going to have to do something about it. She's not in love with the UPS guy and she's still in love with her husband. But, you know, the sad fact is that he wasn't giving her the love that she wanted and support that she needed. And she even told him that she felt lonely and he didn't do anything. So in my case, I would honestly like find somebody else because there's somebody else there out there that wants to give you that attention that you're craving for. And I was honored that Veronica chose to share her secret for the first time with me. But I think she knows that the person she really needs to have a conversation with is a person that she's married to, even though she already did. But I think she should 100% move on. You know, if he doesn't care, if he doesn't show anything, you know, you're worth it. Take care of yourself more. And whatever happens in the future with her marriage, I really hope that she's not so lonely in the future. And that's that's the problem here. Which brings me to the last question of the week, which is, you know, inspired by Den Zian's love of Taylor Swift, because, you know, hopefully you don't have to answer the question that Veronica's, you know, answering to herself. So I'm going to go to Den Zian. Be honest. When you got your Spotify rap list at the end of last year, were you too embarrassed to post it? Would people have been surprised to see what you've really been listening to? Do you have a few guilty pleasures in there? 
Let me know on my Instagram at Lelepons, and I'll see you next week for some more best kept secrets. Bye. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741 741 for a confidential chat anytime. Bum, bum. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebaj. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week. <laughs>